Hey everyone, you've caught me outside painting again. Another nice day and time to just enjoy being outside. I'll be painting from imagination, of course, I'm in my backyard. Um, but, you know, you see the greenery and you're outside, it puts you in a certain state of mind. I've given a spray to this paper again. This is a 140-pound Fabriana Studio. It's a 25% cotton. And I'm just going to go at it here and just kind of start coming up with a bit of a sky. And I like to think of a color, you know, and sort of the, it'll set the stage by doing your sky. Maybe a little red, a little light red. And you just start putting it on there and you go with it. And just follow the paint where it leads. And here we've got a little red. I was thinking a little bit of a reddish sky for some reason. Now, um, if this doesn't work out, I'll show you how you can maybe adapt to this a little bit. But we'll leave that as a little bit of a teaser, and you can watch to the end. But I'm going ahead and I'm adding some blue here. Some ultramarine. I want to work in some blue to the sky, maybe have a little, little pink, little red. Just doing some cloud shapes. And just brushing in a little down below. Never know what I'm going to do in that foreground. If I'm going to have water, seems to be a little bit of my go-to there. You can always take your, I, sometimes I'll take my spray bottle and I'll spray it. Um, but you got to be careful. You know, you get a lot of runs and uh, then there goes your sky. But sometimes it's just what it needs. So I'm going to go ahead. I apologize if I'm moving in and out of the frame and I'll have to keep that conscious of that later. But uh, if I'm moving in and out of the frame and uh, causing the focus to go in and out a little bit, hopefully that's not too much of a distraction. Probably now more so than I mentioned it. So I'm using the brush itself to just kind of dab away a little bit of paint. It creates a little bit of a cloud formation. You've seen me do it with paper towel, but you can do this with the end of your brush, kind of clean things up a little bit. And I'm just drying that brush off a little bit. I had a person ask me, how do I wash the brush? It seems like, you know, if you've seen... Bob Ross, and he beats the devil out of his brush. He dips it in uh, odorless thinner, and then he beats it on this leg of the easel. In with watercolor, it doesn't take much to wash your brush. If you're going to a very light color, you're going to have to swish it around in the water quite a bit. But when you swish your brush around in the water and you dab it on a cloth, it's clean. It just takes a matter of seconds, really. Watercolor paint is very easy to clean up. That's why I like it. That's why I use it. This medium, everything about watercolor is enjoyable. And the cleanup is easy. Depend Some colors you can stain, but for the most part, you get, you get it on your floor. You get it on something, you can wipe it off. So I'm putting in some mountains here. I'm trying to use a little bit of purple, something that works nicely with that sky, a little bit of red in it. We want a theme, we want a little color, we want to be able to tie these things together. A little bit of darker colors. Again, get that dimension. You know, I mentioned that in another video. I like to use a couple of tones rather than solid colors to create a little bit more dimension, a little more variety. Now I'm taking my card. Okay, I'm taking my plastic card, and I'm scraping away. Now, not too much pressure. A lot of people have trouble with this. You're going to have to have paper that has a bit of a grain to it. You're going to want to let the paint sit for a few seconds. It has to be on a decent amount thickness. And then you're going to take your card, and you're not going to put a lot of pressure. It shouldn't take a lot of pressure. You shouldn't be scratching your paper. Uh, the other thing is, is that... Not all cards are created equal. I've had a couple of cards, and they have like little high and low spots that you couldn't see unless you use like a microscope. But I've taken my card, and I've rubbed it against 
things to smooth it a little bit. You need a very, very smooth plastic edge. So I've tried to take a little bit of that reddish tone and put that a little bit into the ground below. Again, keeping within that theme of... Keeping within the theme of trying to tie it together color-wise on the paper. That's where you get into a little bit of trouble where you try to use too many colors on your palette. That's where if you get these sets and you're like, oh, I got uh, 407 different colors and you try to put them all in one painting, it's going to look like a mess. Your paintings, typically my good ones, only have maybe five to seven total colors in them. But there's a combination, you know, there's 300 colors within those seven of mixing together. But really most most successful paintings really gravitate within the same range of color. So now here in I'm going to address that water. Got to do something there rather than just have a white area. And water can be challenging for some people and we want to keep it minimal. We don't want to keep on doing brush strokes and this and that. So the best way I found to do it is just get a little bit of color in there and clean it up a little bit with the edge of the, you know, damp brush and leave a little bit of white around areas of the shoreline. Maybe we want a little bit of light and maybe hit it with a little bit of the spray bottle. And really that's about it. Um, we don't want to make water overly complicated. I've done it before where I've put white in there and different tones and this and that, but the idea here is to stay fast and stay loose and, you know, you turn a painting out in about 15, 20 minutes and uh, have a good time. Not get stressed out. Find the quickest, most efficient way to put something in there that you can live with and uh, roll with it. You know, it's that picking at things and trying to fuss and make things exact that stifle a painting. So I've got a little bit of purple in here. Now, at this point here, as I'm looking at things and I'm, I'm now touching up, I'm using a little darker browns, this and that for my little peninsulas and things that are sticking out here, um, the framework of the water. I'm looking at the sky as I'm doing this, and I'm thinking to myself, well, I've got this purple below, I've got this red, and I kind of don't really have that on the bottom, and I'm thinking I want to go for a little bit more of harmony there. And I'm liking the bottom, I'm liking the sky, and I'm liking what I have on the bottom. I'm just not real super happy with the color balance. Um, so... I'll have to address that. I'm going to give things a little bit of a spray here, and then I'm going to do a little bit of rock scraping, taking that plastic card again. And as I was saying before, sometimes I'll take a plastic card and I'll rub it against, I don't know, like a piece of wood or something, and just to smooth out the edge of that card, the smoother that is. If you ever take your card and you scrape, and you'll notice there's like a line in your scrape, that means there's a low spot on that card. So there's that issue. Now I'm going to put a little bit of, I tried to put a little bit of red in here, trying to get, again, that balance harmony between the sky and the bottom. Really, if you have water on the bottom, there should be a little reflective quality in the water below, but I don't want to touch the water. I like what I have below. So that's going to cause me to go back and fiddle with this sky. And this is a good time to show you what you can do if you had to. But it's very dangerous. It's a very, very dangerous uh, proposal to go back and touch the sky. Once it's done, they tell you don't touch it again. But I know guys like Seago and stuff, they would put like a dry brush over the top after after the the picture had dried. So there's times when you can bend that way of thinking. And again, I'm just taking my card and making some textures. Trying to leave white in areas. It's, it's something... You know, you can plan ahead on. It really works well when you plan ahead. I don't plan that far ahead. Kind of fly by the seat of my pants. Which for me makes even more fun for this wonderful hobby and medium. 
using some darks to kind of anchor things and create some areas of contrast. Now we're going to address this sky. I'm giving it a spray, but I'm being careful. I don't want water to come dripping down too much. So I'm giving it that fine spray, and then I'm going to go in with my wet brush, and I'm going to get some purple, hopefully that matches the bottom, and I'm going to go over the top with this. It's not quite enough, so I'm going to go and get a little bit more. We're going to make it a little bit stronger. You can see that coming into play now. This gives me an opportunity to smooth out a couple of little areas, too, that I wasn't super happy with the way the paint dried on the paper. So a little bit, a little bit more. Again, this is very dangerous. You could, you know, spoil the whole painting with this. But I just want to show you it can be done. I'm just dabbing off if there's any little runs, kind of blending it a little bit. It takes a certain delicate hand. Now I'm coming in a little stronger here. A little more of the purple. It might be a little too... Too purple. And I can add a little bit more Payne's gray or, you know, something to kind of deaden that down a little bit, but it will dry back. See, now you notice right away that you have that purple on top. All of a sudden, the water down below doesn't look so purple. Isn't that something that you take and you know, just throwing in a little bit of color over here really affects how you view the other thing. So that's why you got to be careful. Like sometimes you'll say, okay, I'll use a little bit of grass here. I'll take cad yellow and I put, oh, I really like that little bit of color there. And then you just start jamming it in everywhere. And then you're like, I think that's too much yellow. And you're like, I overdid it. Now what do I do? And then you go and you grab some other color and you're like, okay, I'll go over the top of that and I'll try to kind of tamp that down. Before you know it, you got a lot of paint on your paper and you're like me in some of my paintings. The textures are great, but it kind of leaves the realm of, you know, transparent watercolor and you're almost into people asking you, why didn't you just use acrylic paint? But it's still fun. It's, it's, it's fun to do and it's fun to experiment. I'm taking some little more darks here and I'm just looking for areas of contrast. Where can I put a little bit of dark? Where can I take advantage of the light? These are things you're constantly asking yourself these questions, stepping back from your painting, looking at it. What can I do with this? What, where can I add here, you know? And these are all color and light and component questions. You're not looking for things to do necessarily, like to complete the painting, to add objects. You're looking for ways to make things pop and excite more. So just kind of zooming in on this, just to kind of give you an idea, standing back doing a stand back, taking a look at where we're at with this. And I, I think I can live with that sky. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to take a look at it in its mat. As always, I thank you for your support, your comments. And here it is in its mat. I think it turned out fairly well. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.